Let's get into the first leg of a conversation on the program this evening. Running for public office means that you will be subjected to public scrutiny. As the name implies, it means your background, your finances, even your family ties. Nothing is really off the table when it comes to running for public office. And Nigerians today woke up to a story published by Bloomberg detailing how Aranda Overseas Corp, which is a company belonging to Shei Tinubu, the son of the president-elect Bola Tinubu, is said to have purchased a London mansion which the Nigerian government had tried to seize as property bought with the proceeds of crime. Well, according to the report, he bought the property for well, $10.8 million, is about £9 million, pounds, through the company in which he has majority shares in 2017. And the details of a company is publicly available on the UK government's website. And the property uh, is said to have previously belonged to Mr. Kolawale Aluko, whom the federal government under the President Muhammad Buhari administration has accused of billions of naira worth of fraud and of buying the mansion with embezzled funds. So this story has gotten a lot of Nigerians, even people outside of Nigeria, talking about the case, especially because it is coming less than a month to the inauguration of the president-elect. Our well, channel's television has reached out to Mr. Shei Tinubu and the spokespersons of the president-elect, as well as the EFCC, but we're yet to get a response. But Let's get some learned opinion on this, just to sort of give you an insight into what we're dealing with here. We're joined on the program by a legal practitioner, Mr. Dapo Otitoju, who joins us virtually from the nation's capital, uh, Abuja. Well, good evening and thank you for joining us uh, on the program. Well, we'll try to make do uh, with the picture quality, but just to get to the heart uh, of the matter. Like a lot of Nigerians, uh, you've seen this report, and I wonder for you, what are the issues at stake here? Um, you know, <clears throat> can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, I can. Good evening. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, this uh, allegation is still not uh, confirmed. It's still an allegation. And I will want us to also look at the fact that Shei Tinobu is an individual, a company which a uh, blue bomb, a blue bomb, it's a company that we know that uh, also uh, into business of various, uh, uh, whatever business you think they are entitled to also work on. But be that as it may, I believe that uh, every individual have a right to acquire properties as uh, the demands may come to them. Now, looking at the issue of state, just because uh, Shei Tinubu is the son of the president-elect does not mean that he does not have a right to acquire property. He is not the president-elect, and neither has he also has a position in Nigeria. So now think of the fact that in the oil sector, Shei Tinubu is somebody who has made money from various businesses. And so he has right as an individual to acquire property. So are we saying that if a president, uh, if the father is a president, he himself does not have a right to acquire property from his own business, from his own resources? By all standards, the rule is not a poor man. And that's what, if he has a property that he owns, Okay, uh, well, we looks like we lost connection with you there for a moment, Mr. Otitoji, but if you're still there, uh, you know, looking at the details of the company, uh, Aranda Overseas Corporation, which, as I said, is publicly available on the uh, company's house website of the UK government, uh, it says the country of incorporation, Virgin, uh, the British Virgin Islands, uh, puts the address essentially... Uh, puts details of, of, of the company, uh, which is in reference here by the Bloomberg report. And I, I wonder for you as well, a lot of people are raising the moral question as to, I mean, $11 million, $10.8 million, we could round it off to that. Uh, a lot of people are asking the moral question that, I mean, that is a huge sum of money, isn't it? Yes, I am. You know, like I said, if you look at the status of Chiyitinobu in the society, apart from being the son of the president-elect, 
Sheyi Tinubu is not a poor man. Sheyi Tinubu, by, by all standard, has worked and has earned his money. Look, looking at how much you are talking about, it is not for it is for the company. You are talking about Blue Bank being the purchaser of the property. It is still an allegation, as I earlier said. But whatever it is, we as an individual, we are entitled to, to have right to purchase property as long as the Constitution of Nigeria allows you to have right to immovable property. So Itinubu is a Nigerian. He can acquire property, let alone property that was acquired abroad. And what the problem is, you are not blaming Shei Itinubu. You are saying Blue Bank. Blue Bank is a company. Shei Itinubu is, a, I mean, one of the, is the CEO of the company. So you have to be able to separate Shei Itinubu from Ola Ahmed Itinubu. Ola Ahmed Itinubu is a president. Ola Ahmed Itinubu has not even a Zoom office, let alone uh, now, maybe making the rounds that uh, it is a process of corruption. So I don't agree with those who are talking about the fact that the money is huge. A level, I mean, a level million US dollar. I mean, uh, uh, pounds. As long as Shaitinobu is an individual, he has worked, he's still working, and he can acquire property as much as he can. So long as there's no linkage of the Nigerian resources for him. He has not had any public office. He's not in, uh, he's not the governor. He's not the deputy governor. He's not in the, he's not any of any, he's not holding any elective or public office. So he's a businessman. So I believe that we should stop this making around and concentrate on better things. Well, it's interesting you say that that's, that's not a huge sum of money for a lot of people. That is huge, and I imagine for majority of people. But another issue at stake here. So Bloomberg published uh, that report. The company in question is Aranda uh, Overseas Corporation. But an another major issue is the fact that the Nigerian government under President Mohamed Buhari uh, had actually tried to seize that property, uh, saying it was bought with proceeds of crime. And it's the same property in question that is said to have been purchased by Aranda Corporation. And I'd like to speak to uh, this question of due diligence, because the report out there is also saying that, well, that property was under mortgage anyway, so it was maybe reclaimed by the bank and eventually bought. So uh, does that speak to maybe the due diligence that was done by the Antigraft agency, which sought to seize this property in the first place? <clears throat> now you see when you so when you talk about mortgage, the mortgage system is totally different from uh, what you are talking about. Now in mortgage in, in uh, outside Nigeria, mortgage system is totally different from what I mean outright purchase, which we normally do here in Nigeria. Now looking at what you just said, a property that was seized from uh, uh, I mean a local and. Uh, I mean, the former, the former minister for petroleum. Now, this property will be seized, or I will be seized by the federal government of Nigeria. Of course, have a right to either, I mean, uh, auction it, or if they found out that there's mortgage running on the property, they release it for whoever the mortgage job is. Or the mortgagee, Sheyi Tinubu could also have a right to also acquire this property upon being released back to the bank. Now, the whole uh, activity around this property is still not clear as to whether it was actually seized by Federal Republic of Nigeria. And if it is mortgage, then you cannot be talking of corruption because mortgage system has to go with this, I mean, monthly remittance or yearly remittance as the case may be. So in essence, in essence, what I'm trying to say is that whatever due diligence it was taken, Bluebird, being a company, have a right to invest in properties. As you know, Nigerians and all other companies all over the world today, properties are more lucrative in business and people invest in it not to leave, but to, of course to keep and buy and make money. Right. I can also, you cannot say that the 11 million 
dollars or pounds, as the case may be, is a proceed that, I mean, that is coming from one person. So what I'm trying to let you know is that in any business transaction we are doing, it has a, its own aim of an objective. All right, uh, let's wind down on this. Again, Bloomberg is a organization that published a report and uh, the company in question that purchased the property from that report is Aranda. But what kind of um, impact do you see this having on, well, the image of the president-elect, uh, the swearing-in, which is expected in less than a month uh, away with this kind of report? Uh, what kind of impact do you see it having on his image and, of course, the, uh, the, the, the swearing-in? and his administration as a whole, I should add. Yes. I can hear you, please. Can you just... Oh, my, my question is pretty straightforward. I'm asking that what kind of impact do you see this report that was just released, what kind of impact do you see it having on the image of the president-elect, uh, the swearing-in, which is coming, and, of course, his administration? Yeah, well, as far as I'm concerned, I don't believe that this should affect any swearing or should have any image. Uh, to affect anything, sorry, because Mr. Uh, Yitinubu is an individual. He's the son of the president elect. He's an adult. He's not uh, a minor. And so whatever he does, I mean, he's different from uh, the president elect. Bola Yitinubu is different from Mr. Yitinubu. So please, what I'm trying to let you know is that we cannot link this alongside any of uh, the activity of Bola His son is different from himself. And so, whatever his son does, uh, to the best of my knowledge, that is why he's, he's answering Sheyi uh, Tidubu. And uh, the president-elect, Bola B. Tidubu, is also answering that. So, uh, in cases like this and other climbs, uh, the, the Hunter Biden case, for example, is a major reference point. But uh, in terms of how Nigerians receive this, you know, the anti graft stance of this current administration and, in fact, international perception, uh, because Bloomberg said that he actually uh, bought that property cash down. So does that bother you in any way with that quantum of cash? Now, Bloomberg is a company. Like I said, it's a company. And it is not only Shei Tirubu that is a major stakeholder in that company. Shei Tirubu could also have facilitators, contributors within the company to have bought that property. That's why I say it could be a pool, uh, a, 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 I mean, a system whereby you pull resources together to acquire a property for purposes. So uh, for now, it's still not verifiable. I could not have said Shei Tirubu has not told you that he is the owner of the money. The entire money in using buying the, the property. So I feel that uh, we should concentrate more on uh, the facts that uh, is verifiable uh, and not uh, support us to. All right. Well, these issues are actually there, uh, and Nigerians will naturally ask the question because that's, that's what governance is about being uh, accountable to the people in, in different ways. And I'm sure a lot of Nigerians will be waiting to at least hear the other side. And we'll keep asking. Uh, those questions, hoping to, of course, uh, hear from them uh, soon enough. But we'd like to thank you so much uh, for uh, shedding some light on this. Uh, we've been speaking with Mr. Dabo Titoju, who's a legal practitioner. Thank you. At least we try to make do with the conversation in spite of the uh, you know, picture quality. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Otitoju. Hey.